family, welcome back to my channel. Of course you know that I'm Lanisa King and I'm coming to share with you my book. I'm going to go into uh, detail about some things, giving you the nuggets you need uh, to walk through your storm. I promised you that. And so here I am and we're going to start in the first two chapters. Uh, we're going to name this uh, particular series, Walking Through the Storm book series of course. And so um, I'm going to start out giving you uh, the agenda and how we're going to do it for this particular video. I'm going to cover two keys, two keys. And with those two keys, there are four points in each key that I want to go through. Uh, we'll do an introduction. And at the very end, we want to pray. We want to pray about these two keys in your life. And so that's what we're going to do. Okay. So we're going to get started now. Of course, I'm releasing two very important keys. The first key has to do with prayer, and the second key has to do with forgiveness. And so, prayer is uh, the most powerful tool a believer has. I say this because without it, I would have never survived any of the storms that I've gone through. The reason why prayer is so important when you go through any kind of battle or storm is because your spirit man is built up to a place where he takes over. Your spirit man takes over in that situation. And what comes out of your mouth is all the things that you have studied, all the things that you have um as far as scriptures, you know, those scriptures come forth out of you in power and in strength of the Holy Spirit. The prayer altar, altar is the most powerful place you can come to in, in God's presence. You want to make sure that your prayer life is on fire for God so that when you get, go through those battles in life, it's not going to be a hard thing for you to cry out to the Father. He doesn't mind you crying. He doesn't mind you uh, weeping before his face, right? He really doesn't. He, he wants you to be transparent. He wants your heart to pour out to him, you know, the things that you're going through. And in doing so, when you're very transparent and open like that, that is when the Holy Spirit releases that promise to you, what he's going to do in that situation. That is who he is and that's what he does. And that's what I've experienced every time. It, the promise may have been uh, definitely different for that situation or that storm that I was going through, but God does put a promise in my spirit to hold on to throughout, throughout the entire storm so that I am not consumed. If it wasn't for the mercies of the Lord Jesus, we would be consumed by the enemy. You know, the Lord has set up so much in preparation prior to us going through anything that we would ever go through in this life, he knows what we're going to go through. But he has already paid the price uh, on the cross. He's already given us the tools and the knowledge and everything. And it's found all in that word. It is found in that word. So you set up your prayer life such that when you're going into battles, when you're going into a storm, you are strengthened and you are ready, even though you feel weak. Because see, when you go through a storm, it catches you off guard. A lot of us, you know, don't know when these things are going to hit. We don't know when these things are going to hit. You know, when you talk about a storm, you talk about those things that are devastating to you. You know, like people have gone through miscarriages. People have lost loved ones suddenly. People have lost uh, marriages suddenly or uh, the, the marriage split suddenly. You know, these are different attacks on people's lives or they lost their job suddenly or their health suddenly started crashing, you know, within hours, within minutes, seconds sometimes, you know, suddenly these things happen. And so we have to be prepared, you know, for those type things in our lives. I hope that you're understanding where I'm coming from, and I want to go ahead and start from my book so that you know um, some very important uh, information from that subject along prayer. So let's begin with the first key. We said it was prayer, of course, and I want to draw your attention to four points. Okay, so 
on page one of my book, um, I start out saying this. Having a prayer life is what saved me as I began to walk through the storm. Your prayer life is what's going to carry you through the storm. Without strengthening my spirit man through prayer, I wouldn't have survived. So not only are we to have a prayer life always, but especially during the storm, and you say to yourself, oh, I am very weak, and of course you're crying a lot, and it's very painful, the things that you just faced, and all of that's true. But listen, God doesn't care if it's just a sentence, five, six, seven sentences, as long as your heart is sincere and transparent before the Father. The Lord does his greatest work. Your, your ears are inclined to hear him in the deepest way when you're going through these storms. So cry out to Papa God, no matter what, no matter what. He's not worried about how long you're going to be in your prayer closet. No, he just wants you to come to him and cry out to him, pray to him. So again, without strengthening my spirit man through prayer, I wouldn't have survived it because the, the fight was so great. The storm was very powerful. It was raging, you know. Uh, something you never walked through before is what's happening. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't say a scary thing. Maybe for some it was, but sometimes the spirit of fear does come, try to come in after a certain time to make you feel like it's a hopeless situation. But the devil is a liar. He is a liar. Okay, we're going to move on to point two. Point two is found on page three, right? And I talk about uh, two scriptures right here. And it says in Luke 5, 16, in the New Living Translation, it says, Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. He often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. And also in Mark um, 1, chapter 1, verse 35, it says, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and he went into an isolated place. He went into an isolated place. I want to let you know that uh, I have my book, but also I have notes that I'm following as well. But I'm reading exactly what's in um, my book here. But again, Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. Um, when he was with his disciples, he would he would withdraw. He would withdraw from where he was, and he would go up into an isolated place. He was always found praying. He even wanted his disciples to pray with him. Jesus received strength from the Father. Not only that, direction and guidance and peace and everything he needed in prayer. And it's the same way with us. We're no different. We're to come to the Lord in our time of need or every day, basically, but we're talking about walking through the storm. But we're to come to him and pour out our hearts to him during that time. And the Lord will fill us up with his love, his peace, uh, again, direction and guidance and strength and listen, supernatural power and authority uh, to fight against principalities and power, to wrestle against them in that way. And of course, you know, I'm telling you the truth. In Ephesians 6, 12, it talks about how we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, this is who we're wrestling during the storm. Um, he tries to get us to be discouraged and think about other things and that these things are not going to happen, that the promise that God gave us is not going to happen. But again, he speaks lies and he's, he does not speak the truth. So we have to use 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5 to shut him up. The Bible says that, that our warfare is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Let me back up a little bit. 
It says, for the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every high imagination and every lofty thing, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So every thought that you're thinking, everything that you're going through, you got to shut it down immediately so that the enemy does not have, wreak havoc, havoc on us. You can only go as far as your personal prayer life, right? If you spend a little time in prayer, you only have a little power. But if you spend much time in prayer, you will have great power. So not only does your prayer life strengthen your uh, spirit man, but it causes you to rise up into uh, greater power and authority as well. Uh, this is why you saw Jesus praying. My question to you today is, if Jesus, the Son of God, prayed constantly, how much more do you think we need to pray? We need to pray and stay in fellowship with him. Just as much as Jesus did with his Father, the fa our Father <laughs> who art in heaven, we're to do it just as much. So prayer is not just something you do when you walk through a storm or a crisis situation. No, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. You do this daily throughout the day, uh, just throughout the night. You do it daily. Whenever, you know, something comes to your heart, maybe it's a person that you want to pray for uh, or, or their name comes up in your spirit, you pray for them. You pray for them. Point number three, this is found on page six, and it's the second paragraph. Page six, and it's the second paragraph. Prayer is essential in walking through all battles or storms. Develop a prayer life that will carry you through life's challenges. <laughs> when you dwell in this secret place of the Most High, He will keep you in His perfect peace protection, strength, and love. This is so, so extremely true. He definitely sustains you. He definitely keeps you. His word becomes alive and active in your life, and literally it becomes life in you. You know, it comes to pass. His word won't return to him, boy, but it will accomplish that, that it was sent to do. So you must speak his word while you're praying in a very, very serious way. You know, take the word of God seriously when you're praying because these things that you're praying will come to pass. And point number four, uh, page eight is where this information is coming from in my book. All this is coming from chapter one again. We're going to look at the bottom of the first paragraph, and then we're going to also look at um, the second paragraph as well. And it says, the bottom of the first paragraph, prayer is where you, where you will get your answers. Your answers, protection for your loved ones, peace. You'll find peace, you'll find compassion, you'll find strength, and everything that you need. Positioning yourself consistently in prayer, in His presence, the presence of God will cause you to hear His voice and receive the promise that you need to walk through your storm. Okay? The second key, the second key is forgiveness. I want to say a prayer at the very end of our time here, okay? So let's pray. Let's pray. I'm going to read my prayer from page nine to you because these prayers were very powerful in the book and I just want to give that to you right now. Father, I honor and I thank you for hearing my prayers. I can't do or become anything without you. Thank you for teaching me who I am in your presence. Thank you for making me who I am today in my marriage, in my career, my community, and in the world. I appreciate your love and how you mold and make me to be courageous in your presence. Thank you for showing me 
that prayer is essential, an essential tool to use as I contend for the things in the spirit, especially the storm that I'm walking through right now. I believe your word will do what you spoke to me it will do, and it, you will make good on your promise. Father, and I praise you for all that you're going to do in my life and what you're doing right now in my life. I receive it and I believe it. I know that you heard it too the first day that I prayed it. It is on the way, the things that you have promised me. My prayers are coming to pass. And this is the confidence that I have in you, Lord, that if I ask anything according to your will, I know that you hear me. And if I know that you hear me, I know that I have the petitions that I asked of you in Jesus' name. That's coming from 1 John 5, 14. Amen and amen. God bless you and I love you. I hope that you remember uh, the first key is prayer and the essential points that I made today. If not, go back, review the video, okay? Don't forget to like and subscribe when you like. Uh, they definitely will pull this video up when you're typing in prayer. When you're typing in certain keywords, this video will come up, especially the word prayer. So make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share this with your friends. God bless you. Love you so much. I will see you on the next uh, video for key number two. Bye guys. Talk to you soon.